I am going to talk to you today about the journey within. We have been undertaking a lot of journeys outside. From time immemorial, man has ventured out of his home and tried to explore space and places outside. But it hasn't occurred to too many men that there is a vast space within oneself in which one can undertake a journey. And that space is not outside this body, but within this body in a small few inches area which we call our own head. This area, this space is all that is needed to make a long interesting journey within. And I am going to tell you how it can be done. The journey within is possible because whatever experiences we have with our senses depend upon where our attention is. The attention chooses the senses that operate and give us experience. Therefore, if our eyes look at something, that something becomes real for us so long as the attention through the eyes is riveted on that what we are seeing. Similarly, what we hear, what we touch, what we taste or smell, all these sensory perceptions make reality for us because we are able to then experience the things and experience places through giving our attention to those things and places. Thus, attention is the real secret of making a journey. Even when we make journey outside, whether on this planet Earth or into outer space, we take our attention outside and that is what gives us experiences of places and things and people outside. Supposing we were to reverse this and instead of taking the attention outside, we were to withdraw our attention inside, within our own self, not taking it out from the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth to places outside, but concentrating our attention within the area from where it is going outside. That point behind our eyes, that point in the center of our forehead, just behind the eyes, is a, has been called the third eye center or the inner eye or the center. And that center of consciousness is from where all the attention is going out. If we were to close our eyes and withdraw attention to that center, we would find that the center holds a lot of space. The center holds a lot of possibility and opportunity. That that center has so much unique experience which is not even found outside. It is only a question of visiting that center. From birth till we grow up and die, we are giving our attention to things outside. We don't seem to ever embark upon the journey within our own self. How can we do it? People do not train us to go within. When we are born, our parents try to draw our attention to outside things. Little babies are encouraged to listen to jingling bells and other toys outside so that they can uh, move their attention outside. Nobody tells us that we can uh, withdraw in a wakeful state behind the eyes and experience a journey of strange dimensions and strange experiences which lies behind the eyes. That journey which we can experience behind the eyes has been relegated to spiritual disciplines, to different kind of uh, occult beliefs. And because of the nature of some of these disciplines, people have tended to disregard them as belonging to faith or a belief system and not as genuine empirical experience. With the result that the majority of people who say we want to go by empirical evidence, we want to go by what is commonly uh, possible, what, is, what can be experienced by people generally, they ignore these uh, experiences of the mystical and of the occult and they want to uh, engage themselves only in the experiential world of the five senses outside the body. But my suggestion to you is 
that if you want to withdraw attention behind the eyes, you do not have to belong to a particular discipline or a particular occult group or a religious group or a spiritual group. You have to be just a wakeful human being and you can go behind the eyes and have the journey within. You do not have to be extraordinary. You do not have to be abnormal. You do not have to be supernormal. You have to be just an ordinary human being with some control over attention. And if you get that control over attention, you can go within and that journey will be very fruitful. I can assure you that the journey within starts by our closing the eyes, not listening to outside stimuli, sitting in a very calm place and then withdrawing attention to the third eye center behind the eyes. When we close our eyes, we see a darkness. That darkness is not inside. That darkness is in front of us. Because we have closed our eyes, we cannot see the light outside. Therefore, it looks dark. But as we withdraw our attention, light from within comes back again. And we see lot of things inside, lot of places, lot of people. And we see that all the experiences we were getting outside also have their duplicates also have their origins, also have their counterparts inside. The more time we spend behind the eyes inside in that meditative pose, the more we can experience a world within. When we start this experience of meditating within by closing our eyes and withdrawing our attention behind the eyes at the third eye center, first it looks like the space inside the head is just a few inches a few inches side to side and a few inches from front to back and that is the total space that we are aware of. Because we are conscious of the size of the head and the size of the body, therefore the space looks very limited. But as we concentrate our attention more on the center of that space, we find that the space increases. Because that experience of space is not based upon the physical space available, it is based upon the vastness of the possibilities of imagination and attention. Consciousness which resides behind the eyes has immense space of its own and immense time of its own. So even if one were to uh, go within on a journey for five minutes and sit peacefully, one can experience thousands of years and billions of miles of journey and travel within. Therefore, it is not the physical space that creates the area for travel within. It is the space within consciousness, which is unlimited, that gives us the opportunity of the journey within. Let me take a typical example of what would happen if we withdrew our attention behind the eyes and started on a journey. Gradually, we will lose the sensation of our extremities, the hands and feet and legs and arms will virtually disappear because we will become unaware of them. We will become unconscious of the parts of the body which are at the extreme. Gradually, this loss of awareness of the ends of the body travels towards the main trunk of the body and we begin to feel we are not sure if the rest of the body is there. But our awareness of being in the space behind the eyes remains very strong and we fly in a sky which we create within the head because of the immense space that is becoming available to us as we become unconscious of the body. Eventually, we find streaks of light coming from different directions and different kind of sounds that we can hear. As we concentrate our attention and do not allow other thoughts to take us away from that point in the center of the head, the sounds ultimately become like the sound of a big bell something that we are accustomed to hearing in church bells or in temple bells. The sound of the bell is coming from within. If we put our attention on the sound of the bell, we start our journey within. As the sound of the bell increases, so does the light coming from different sides. Ultimately, we get great experiences of white light and different colored lights, some light falling like waterfalls that comes in front of us. 
if we stay in the center of the head and do not move towards these experiences, these experiences keep on growing and we keep on flying towards different experiences. Of course, if we try to move away from the center of the head and try to follow any of these experiences, then they disappear because then our attention goes back into the outer body and we do not have any journey within. Therefore, one of the secrets of a successful journey within is to stay in the center just behind the eyes and not go after any of the images, pictures, lights or sounds that are coming from around us. If we are patient enough and we stay in the center long enough, then we find that the light and the sound, they create a big space and a big sky in which we start flying and we are released from the bondage of the bodily weight, the bodily aging, the bodily molecular and atomic system and we find that we are made of a very super fine kind of a body which is so light, so luminous, so full of its own light that we can travel wherever we like without needing any external light or any external assistance to move about. We don't need wings, we don't need aeroplanes, we find that just by our thought we can travel wherever we like. It looks like imagination of the physical world has become a reality of travel within our own conscious system. It is a very interesting experience and if we keep on that flight and keep staying at the center, we find that we are able to traverse long distances. We can first see this very world uh, from a different point of view. We can walk through walls, we can walk through physical matter, we can become small or large and look at big things from the perspective of a large eye that we have. Big mountains can be seen as if they are made of sand and we can go into one molecule and see it as if it was the whole world. So we can change our perspective and we can change our point of view just by our thought and this ability to be able to see things and travel across the known universes with a different uh, uh, instrument of vision is a very interesting experience and those who have had it can say that this gives us a real bird's eye view as well as a molecular view or a, or a nuclear view of anything that we want to experience in this world. But that is not all. The journey has just commenced. If we keep the journey by staying in the center of consciousness, we can fly beyond the physical universe into universes that are the origin of the physical universe. We will find that the physical universe of matter has been created because there is another universe of ideas and concepts from where matter is taking shape. We will find there is another world which is also almost at the same place. We don't have to go anywhere, but it looks like we are flying through immense space to reach those experiences. But actually we are still at the same place in the center of consciousness and those experiences are coming to us. But the experiences come at such a fast pace, it looks like we are flying through an inner space. When we fly through that space, we are able to reach a world which is the creator of this world. We do not find merely a creator whom we call God who created this universe. We find that God created a an entire copy, an entire original of this universe and this universe was a copy of that original. And we can through this inner journey, through this journey within, go to the original of this world. We can see how all the colors of this world, how the different uh, sense perceptions of this world have come into being by looking at the original. We can also find that so-called people who have come from different uh, uh, time zones, those who have been historical figures, those who are still to come can all be uh, found and we can make acquaintance with them in that level of consciousness where we are finding the original. Sometimes this original level of experience is called the astral level and people refer to this kind of flying and journey within as an astral experience and a journey into the astral world. The astral world 
is uh, just a world made out of sensory perceptions. It is not a world that we have to visit physically to see. It is a world that contains all that is contained in the physical world and yet we can traverse it through thought, through our attention. When we use our thought and place our attention anywhere, that thing becomes real and we are able to experience it through the sensory system. The senses are still intact, but the physical body is not there. The astral body with which we are flying in that astral region is made of sense perceptions alone and is not made of physical matter. That is why it looks like a very super fine body. If we are able to concentrate on the journey within and stay within that consciousness which is now moving about in the astral region, we are able to go beyond that into a still higher experience called the causal region or the causal experience. The causal experience in fact is nothing more than the experience of the thought process itself. When we transcend the senses and do not need a sensory experience, but we want to be conscious of how all this came about, we want to get it in one grasp, then it is possible through the mind, through the causal system, which is the cause of all other sensory and physical experiences. Through that system, we are able to experience not only our own causal self, but we can see how all the causal resources which lead to creation have been stored in a certain region of time which we call causal time. The causal body is nothing more than our own mind. When our mind starts functioning without use of senses, without use of physical body, we call it the causal self. So the mind is the causal body and as we traverse through that region which is very vast and one can go trillions of years back into the past or trillions of years in the future and much more. It is so vast, there is no end to it. This vastness is all still within consciousness and is being experienced by the meditator behind the eyes, still focused in the physical body. But since one has become unconscious of the physical body, unconscious of the senses, therefore this new experience has opened up and the causal experience takes us back to the origin or the cause of all creation. This is where they speak of Akashic records or Akashic records, which they say are the foundation of all physical experience. Those records are nothing more than the blueprints of how an experience can be generated in the sensory and the physical system. Therefore, if we make this journey within into the causal region, we can have access to the blueprints of our own past, present and future as well as the past, present and future of anybody else that we know, of all possible human beings, of all possible living things. <clears throat> and that is a great experience to be able to see that what we thought was a local life which we are trying to determine through our own destiny is in fact nothing more but a blueprint already prepared and already existing <clears throat> at a higher level of consciousness. The causal level is not the final level. It looks final because it is universal, because it is endless and infinite, because it is the home of the universal mind, because it is an area where we can experience the totality of past, present and future. It looks like the ultimate. And many of the mystics, yogis and saints who have come in the past have declared it to be the ultimate experience. It is only a very few perfect living masters who have come to tell us that the mind is not the self and that our own real self, the real source of consciousness is not the mind but a soul that the mind has covered up. That the consciousness comes from an inner core of consciousness or the soul which is not mind and therefore the causal self is also merely a cover which through further journey within we can give up and experience reality. These perfect living masters who had that experience of transcending the mind and giving it up, they told us that the causal level 
is the ultimate so far as time and space are concerned, so far as the principle of cause and effect are concerned, but it is not the ultimate so far as the spiritual journey is concerned. In fact, some of them said that the spiritual journey of the soul only starts after we give up the mind. So the causal journey is only the end of the physical system and the real spiritual journey starts when we are able to recognize that the mind is not ourself and the mind has to be given up in order for the soul to discover itself and then the spiritual journey starts. When the true spiritual journey starts, it is beyond the universal mind, beyond time, beyond space, beyond cause and effect, beyond all comprehensible means of experience that we are used to in this physical world. How does that look like? A spiritual journey which does not have time, does not have a beginning, a middle or an end, does not have a past or a present or a future, does not have any dimensions in which to see or to hear or to touch. How does it experience? How does it feel? These perfect living masters who have transcended the causal region and gone into the pure region of spirit, they tell us that the spiritual experience is one of love and immediate knowledge, immediate intuitive knowledge, love, beauty and joy, which is all at one time, at one place which is infinite. That experience of the ultimate bliss is only possible with the spirit and not with the mind. The mind divides us into different sections of time and space, but the spirit takes us beyond and gives us that experience of the bliss of the self. And therefore, the spiritual journey which is beyond the mind is of immense beauty and immense happiness and is the counter of all the pain and misery that we suffer in the physical worlds right up to the universal mind. So the physical level of journeying outside, the inner journey through senses and imagination, the inner journey through the causal regions through the mind, they are all in one group and they are responsible for pain and pleasure for the pairs of opposites. And beyond these lies the real spiritual journey which takes us into ultimate bliss and is the opposite of this world of pain and pleasure. And the perfect living masters tell us that that is the real purpose of our journey. It is only when we cross the origin of this physical world, the origin of the astral and causal world and go into pure spirituality where there is no time and space and no cause and effect that we can say we have found out who we are. Self-realization takes place only beyond the mind in the spiritual region the third region beyond these worlds. When we reach the third stage beyond these worlds and start a journey in the spiritual region, that journey is not the journey of flying through the sky. That journey is the journey of enlarging our consciousness to discover the truth about our own self. We find that whereas right now we feel we are all individual souls, that we are living because of our individuality, that we have contact with a lot of other people who are individuals like us. The truth is that we are consciousness and the individuation or the feeling of being a unit separated from others was only created around us through this external mental creation. That when we rise from here to our spiritual self, that individuation starts dropping off. The last part of the journey from the individual soul to our own reality, to our own totality, is the giving up of this illusion of being a separate unit. We are not one separate unit in a large universe. We are the universe. The universe is within us. The universe is part of us. The universe is created because of us and therefore, when we have the last part of the journey from the individual soul to our own totality, it is in fact the journey to our own godhood, to our own totality. And one is able to realize that the whole game of creation came from our true nature of being absolute total consciousness from where we got into the individuation experience of being one 
and then from there into the experience of time, space and causation, to the experience of senses and to the experience of the physical world. Through this journey within, we are able to find the reality of our own selves and it is well worth undertaking. Thank you.